their dream has been crushed. They've gone from Bielsa to Jesse Marsh to Javi Grazia to Sam Allardyce. Is this a boardroom problem? Well, I mean, it's interesting. I had a good look last night at the at the start of the season and um, with Marsh in charge, and they were only losing by the odd go- by the odd goal with him. Uh, they actually started the season quite well. I think they got seven points from the first nine available. And you thought, OK, maybe this after keeping him up last year, he was the right appointment. And I, I think really they, they held on to him just a little bit too long. Um, the form never really improved. The number of goals that they started to concede was becoming really embarrassing. And, and when you go into the last game of the season, you have all those plans in place. But when you concede a goal in two minutes, it's just so deflating. Two minutes into the first half, they're a goal down. And the defending is, is really it's awful. It's shocking. It's really awful. 78 goals they conceded, Martin. Can you imagine conceding 78 <sighs> goals in a season? No. And I, I look at the Aronson and Adams and Rocco and Sinistera, uh, McKen- McKenney. I mean, all Rutter, good players, uh, but no one really putting a performance together. And they never seem to have any real composure in front of the goal. Well, we don't know whether Ruter is a good player or not because they well, never played him. Well, no. Only in the FA Cup. But we didn't see very much of him at all. So, you know, lots of expenditure. Um, it's a shame because it's a huge football club. Um, it's going to be difficult for, to get back into that top level. It's never easy, I can tell you. Um, a lot of discontent there yesterday. Um, I'm really sad to see that football club after so long away from it. OK, mm. back in there for three years, go back out again. Fans were completely angry last night. The atmosphere was hostile at Ellen Road yesterday. Mm. Um, there's some good people in that broad room. Paul Bell, uh, Angus uh, Kinnear. Kinnear yeah. um, but did they put too much trust in their former sporting director, Victor Orta? Yes, to some extent, but they put too much trust in in a variety of different per- places. If you've got an ownership model that's pulling one way and another one, if you've got you've got two people in the boardroom. You've got the, the owner that's selling the football club on the basis of it stays in the Premier League, and you've got the new owner sitting and waiting in the wings with a different viewpoint on things. That's why you've got people alleging that players were going to be sold by one part of the ownership model, with another part of the ownership model not wanting them to be sold. Yeah. You've also got influence. There's no the RB model is great if you're playing in Austrian and German leagues that are not as competitive as the Premier League. It's not the same model that happens in the Premier League. So to lift Jesse Marsh and to drop him in to exercise the spirit of Marcelo Bielsa was a mistake. To stay with him longer than they, they should have done was a mistake. To not have any availability around then start pinning tails on donkeys because they couldn't find anybody and Javier Gracia came in to fill a gap for a period of time. Were you surprised by that appointment? Well, well I, I wasn't, I wasn't because there wasn't anything around. That There were three, two or three football clubs looking for managers at that time and they were having difficulty finding them. They can't find any candidates to come forward. Southampton were in the same space. Hence, mm. they ended up with Ruben Sellers because they couldn't find anybody to take the job over. And there was an element of that going on at Leeds to some extent, which is unbelievable when you think it's a Premier League job, but notwithstanding it, it was the case. Do they wait too long? Because you thought Dyche was, was all right, right, right. Said, didn't you? Well, I thought he did okay. I thought we did okay for the first three or four games and I thought he was half sensible and, and then of course what happened was no one can understand this they are battering Crystal Palace in the first <laughs> half mad. battering Crystal Palace Palace scored before half time and the second half Leeds just absolutely evaporated Collapsed. and from that point five, on one. Yeah. they lose five they lose six they lose four mm-hmm. and it becomes the staple diet that he can't seem to un, 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 unwind from the, the if defenders can, were shocking weren't they? well they are but if you, I mean, if you look at Leeds' decision making well, they never replaced Kelvin Phillips they never replaced an offensive option in Rafinha mm. pa- Patrick Bamford I thought at times this season was diabolical Poor, not just penalty misses, but in games where he didn't hold the line up, he didn't do his job. I don't know whether new contracts have affected his outcome because he got a new contract, but he certainly he was back to the Patrick Bamford that was a jobbing centre forward that went around to Palace and other football clubs because he couldn't get a proper gig rather than a Patrick Bamford a couple of years ago that was scoring a lot of goals for them. But all of that is 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 diminishes against the reality of the decision making processes. What's the point of bringing Sam in to give him this unpalatable amount of money? whether it's 500 grand for four games or three million pounds for staying up and give him four games of which two of them were against Newcastle and Man City. Never you, going to work, was it? Was never, you, you, he needed six or eight games to have an effect. I don't think I've seen enough of change in, in those games, in those four games, albeit very difficult because you come in so last minute. I haven't seen anything that's made me think, okay. They were good against Newcastle, Mark. Did okay against, Newcastle, good against Newcastle, but that's the game really, that's a home match that you, you expected. I thought the first half against Man City just weren't even in the game. Um... I know it ended up 2-1 in the match and man, you know they maybe did better in the second half. I think maybe it's one thing that we'll never know. I don't. He didn't stay on at West Bromwich Albion. We went in there to do a um, sort of caretaker job. He, he t- down tools. There's this feeling that he wants to... I sense in his voice he wants to carry on. I'm not sure they're going to give him that opportunity. I do think it wouldn't be the end of the world if he stayed there. He's now put, obviously, two or three weeks, weeks work in. He's assessed the club. 
at least he'll be giving his work, penny worth to the board. Um, and then it'd be their call to whether they keep him or not. But I don't know whether or not he's really got that ambition to be in the championship. This is one incarnation where he didn't have Sammy Lee alongside him mm. because Sammy Lee wasn't available. Now I don't it's think on jury service. Yes, I know. Yeah, I know. I am, um, and a few <laughs> and of those a few, few of those players should be had up for certain it's things. Criminal, wasn't it? Shouldn't they? Um, but um, I, I, I look at myself and say, well, Sam, if you've got Sam Allardyce from a few years ago, maybe. I am a h- huge admirer of Sam. I like him personally. Mm. Um, and I like him professionally. I, I'm not entirely sure that I liked his particular little soliloquy walking in the door. Maybe he wanted a correct impression in the dressing room, I think was what Martin was suggesting to me a few weeks ago about letting people know that he was here by making the statements that he made about who he is and what he is and where his credentials are. He's managed West... If, if, you, get the West, if you get the Sam Allardyce that managed West Ham 10 years ago out of the Championship, or however long it got, was, into the Premier League... Everton as well. And, and, what, and Everton as well, then fine. But the reason why I say the Sam Allardyce that managed West Ham is because Sam is, is, has got a, an attitude about where he thinks he should be in the food chain. And if he goes but into not the... not anymore. Cha- no, he, more so now. Do you think so? Well, more so now. Absolutely more so. He resists the notion that he's fireman Sam. He doesn't like it. He makes a point about where he thinks he should be. He doesn't think he should be managing the championship. He should manage him in the Premier League. Now, that's no problem. Not 68 years of age that's doesn't not a, think that. But that's not, surely. Yeah, I think Sam's worse than he's ever been. I think Sam buys into the mentality that he's big Sam. I think I think he's ultimately... I mean, I said it the other day on a show with him. I said to him, if someone asked me, would I employ Sam? I said, I have difficulty employing someone that actually refers to himself as big Sam. I take that <laughs> with a struggle. But if he goes down... Why? if he, Because I think it's ridiculous to refer yourself as a monarchy. You've <laughs> Come on, you, you become a character of yourself, don't you? But I think if don't you, you go- call yourself Smooth Simon outside. No, I do not. I wasn't here. I waited to the last minute to come in the door because I knew how long <laughs> I had to endure you for. But but the point is this: if you go, if Sam is down in the championship with the right ma- mindset, he'll get Leeds United back up. 